Okay, hello everyone. Uh, we have with us a football coach who has brought success to every country he has coached in, an author of a great book which is a fantastic read and a gem for Indian football, the saint of grit and will, Mr. Stephen Constantine. Sir, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation and um, I would like to start off uh, by saying um, my sincere uh, wishes for everybody in India in this very, very difficult time. Um, it's heartbreaking, actually. Right, right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the wishes. And uh, I hope everything is uh, well in your country and uh, everything is right in your family, too. Yep, yep, we are. Okay, thankfully. Okay, okay. So, uh, Mr. Constantine, I'll start with my first question. Um, so, my first question is, uh, you brought sports science to India uh, in mm -hmm. your second stint here. And there was a lot of analytic uh, tools you bought, too. How difficult was this to implement? And uh, there are so many benefits of that that we are seeing in modern day football too in India. How how did you bring all of that changes? Well, look, um, I have always tried to evolve as a coach, um, try to stay young in mind at least, and and and, and recognize that um, things change. Uh, sometimes they are better, sometimes they are not. But you have to decide. Um, which is good and which is not good. Right. Um, I think sport, sports science um, has been and is, will continue to be one of the best uh, uh, things that has ever come into football in the terms of we are able to do so much with this uh, information that we get from the GPSs. Right. Uh, of, right. uh, to, to do that, I need uh, um, very good qualified people and Danny Deegan was... Um, uh, from Australia was my right. guy and, and still is my guy, okay. by the way. Um, he is um, one of the best that I have worked with in that, in, in that field. And um, together with him and, and, and obviously the AIFF giving me the um, uh, green light to do that. It's, it's, it's not a cheap uh, right, right. tool. It, it, it costs money. Um, and, and, and there again, I, I, I have to thank the AIFF in particular, Mr. Fushul Das and, and Mr. Prabhupada Patel for allowing me to, to do this and obviously spend their money right. uh, to do that. But uh, yeah, I think it, it, it's been great, great for the players and, and great for everybody. Right, right, right. And we are still seeing because it, is, it has improved Indian football to such an extent that now we are going into the details of how much distance a player covers. It's almost like European football. So all thanks to you because you started that process. So big shout out to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, um, I, I, I think uh, the thing, the one thing that you got to remember, um, the the distance a player covers, right? Um, for example, is is not the major um, uh, plus from this. For example, we played a game uh, last week. Uh, and on average, we did about 10 kilometers per game. Right. Uh, yes. Uh, but we lost that game. The right. previous week, we did nine, and we won that game. Right. So the the, um, the whole concept for the uh, GPS and the uh, um, and the sports science is injury prevention. Right. Uh, you 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 can measure the loads of the players, and, and we will know if uh, Ashikunyan is tired or has done more than he should and then we can rest him and recover him sure. uh, and make sure that he'll be ready for the next game so it's more about keeping uh, your best players on the pitch for the right at the right time right 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 makes sense makes sense uh, okay so my second question is mr constantine that uh, you have coached in rwanda and uh, i saw a very interesting piece which said that uh, they eat a lot of seema over there which is high in starch and you don't uh, high in starch sorry and you don't like that too much because it's not good for the players it uh, generates fat it's not very good in carbs and other things so in india also we have very similar foods there is rice there is dal um, how how did you deal with the culture because every player in india is from a different part of the country and they all eat different types of foods how did you deal with that <laughs> Um, uh, just to tell you, do you know what Seema is? Seema, I just know that it is high in starch and it's almost like rice. Yeah, no, no. It's, uh, it's sweet corn. Okay, it's corn. Okay. Okay, and they, and they grind the sweet corn into a powder. Okay. And they grind it and grind it and grind it and then they add water to this. 
Right. Uh, and, and this is how they eat. It's, it's almost like porridge. Okay. Um, but uh, going back to your uh, Indian question, look, um, at the national team, uh, we took uh, all considerations of all states, all religions, uh, all um, the players from different states. Right. Uh, and and we, we, we took the best things from the Indian food, and, and believe me, Indian food is the best. <laughs> we took the best things from there. For example, dal. Um, right. You could not... We, Remember one day we, we took dal off the menu mm. and <laughs> almost had an, uh, <laughs> almost the players left the camp. Um, okay. you, you have to, you have to um, try and balance things out. Um, example, a, a lot of our Indian food is quite spicy and quite oily. Right. Uh, this, is, this is not great for an athlete. Right. Uh, so we would make the food, we would have the food made, but less oil, less fat. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, the players um, understood that um, it's not the same as their mother's cooking, right. but um, it, it's definitely going to help them last longer on the pitch, last longer in training. Um, and, and, and I think um, we, we, we managed a good balance um, everywhere we went to all the hotels where we went to the Asian Cup. Also, we had Indian chefs who mm. understood we were trying to do and that makes uh well they 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 know how to cook indian food um, but they will do it in in a more um effective way for the players so um it, it was good right okay and talking about indian food which is your favorite dish from india uh chicken murug malai oh my god <laughs> you said it you yeah, said exactly. it pretty, you said it pretty properly it's, it's almost like an indian uh, talking your dialect <laughs> is very clear <laughs> With some butter naan, of course. Naan With bread. some butter naan, okay. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I miss it. <laughs> right. Can't find okay. it anywhere. Yeah, you can't find it anywhere. True. Okay, uh, Mr. Constantine, you were talking about Rwanda. You brought them to a FIFA ranking of 68. You did the same with mm -hmm. India. You brought us to 97. Uh, how does it feel to achieve this feat with two countries? Because I am really out of words when it comes to the FIFA ranking that we achieved because it is such a big achievement for us for us as a country, how does it feel? Look, um, I, I, I have to say that both of those uh, moments were big highlights for me as a coach. Right. right. Um, and um, in, 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 and, and I, I, I look at I look at Rwanda, and you know we didn't have any any players playing outside of Rwanda, right. um, which is common. In uh, they were all local boys. They were all young, young, young players, um, and they wanted to succeed. And um, that, that's exactly what we had. Um, by the time we finished in India, uh, we had a young team. Average age was twenty-three, I think. Right. Uh, we were the youngest team in the Asian Cup, mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, I had fantastic uh, Indian. I had fantastic foreign staff with me. Um, everybody was working um, for the betterment of uh, Indian football. And when you have people on the same page and they want the same thing, um, then, you know, you give yourself a chance to, to achieve things that maybe you didn't think was possible. And, and I still think um, uh, we can improve on what we have in India. Um, and I hope that continues. True, true, true. Okay. Okay, Mr. Constantine, you have coached in so many different countries and I'm sure that before you arrived, they had a different playing style and you wanted them to play in a different way. Uh, how did you make them adapt to you or did you change your tactics according to them? How did it work out? Well, I think you, you, you have to bear in mind what went before you. Um, what was the mood when I came in 2015 in India? Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't very good. Um, what kind of system were they playing? What players were playing in that system? Right. Uh, and I think you, you, you obviously have to adapt to the um, ability and the level of your players. So um, I think one of the things that we lacked in India when I, right. when I came was confidence. We weren't sure if we could beat Nepal. Right. With all due 
to Nepal and Sri Lanka and, and the other South countries, we should be beating them clearly in every game. True. Uh, so, so, so when I would select the national team, I picked a particular type of player. And I know there was a lot of people who said, well, why didn't you pick this guy? And why didn't you pick that guy? True. I picked guys who I felt would do what we needed them to do. Right. Okay. Maybe, maybe you, you could say, um, I, I won't name names, but the right back that played was not as good as the right back, uh, say, in one of the teams in the ISL. Right. Maybe not. But the way we were going to play, how we were going to deal with Iran, China, UAE, Thailand, is not the same way that you would play against Kerala Blasters, uh, Goa, or, or, or any one of these other teams. True. So I'm picking players based on what I felt they could do for me in the national team right. and not necessarily, um, uh, should we say, players who were playing in a different style for their clubs. Right. Um, and this was the balance. Uh, so, um, and the thing is, is when a player knows what his job is, you know, you'll be surprised uh, how good he can become. Okay, okay. And you have coached in so many places, Mr. Constant. And is it difficult to get the players to adapt to your style of play or does it come naturally? How does it work out? Look, I think... Um, it, 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 it's finding it's finding the balance. Um, I want to win. I don't want to lose. Right. I don't go in, in with the thought that I am going to lose. Right. Um, obviously, when you go into a situation uh, like India and, and here in Cyprus, I took over Bafos who were um, uh, struggling, hadn't won for, for quite some time. Right. Um, and then it says, listen, we're going to change this because this is, this is going to make us win. Right. Uh, of course, you then need to win some games. Right. Um, and, and it doesn't always happen overnight. You may go four, five, six games. Mm. But you have to believe in the process and, uh, and the type of football that I want to play is attacking football, um, quick football. Um, but um, sometimes you are playing against uh, bigger and better teams and you cannot play that way. So you have to be able to adapt your game uh, and try and change things without compromising your your beliefs. Right, right. Okay, makes sense. Uh, also, uh, I was reading a lot about uh, the places that you have coached in, and there was an interview I came across in which you said that it is very uh, difficult for the African players in England uh, because it seems as if they are having an easy, uh, they have an easy life, they have a very good life, they've made it as a pro footballer in England, but it's very difficult for them back in their own country. Uh, would you like uh, like to talk about that further? Yeah, look, um, I don't, I don't think um, people understand, um, and and this could be uh, for for some Asian players, but uh, it, it's particularly prevalent in Africa. I don't think people understand when uh, a player in Africa gets selected, even for India. Okay, so right. uh, and, uh, and we have some African players uh, playing in India. Right. Um, the amount of issues that they will have because they're out of their own country, which that would mean that they would be making more money than right. they would be making in their own country. Right. Um, they then have to look after. Uh, so I know in India, we look after the, the brother, the sister, the mother, the grandmother, the grandfather, right. immediate family. Right. But in Africa, uh, it would be the friend, the friend's brother, the friend's sister, the friend's mother, um, uh, it could be the entire village. Okay. Uh, I, I remember when we, uh, with FIFA, we had uh, an investigation into a player who died during the course of a game. Uh, um, it was quite some time ago. And um, he was making very, very good money in England. Um, but they couldn't find any of this money anywhere after, after he had passed. Um, and long, the long story short is basically... He was um, subsidizing around 50 to 60 families oh, back in home country. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so when you, um, 
when you bring some of these players from from Africa, you you have to understand the pressure. Some of them some of them are under, uh, uh, and what they go through, and and this affects behavior. You know, when when your family is back in in Africa, uh, and somebody threatens your family right. because you didn't get some money or you didn't uh, uh, bring them something, this is. Uh, this is a, a major problem that some of uh, most people don't don't hear about. Okay, okay. And how difficult is it to manage these uh, player uh, psychologies? And how do you uh, maintain? Uh, you know, because you have to be in the national team and you have to perform at your topmost level. And they have problems mm-hmm. back home, especially when you were in Africa. How did you maintain that sense of commitment uh, in the national team? Well, I think um, obviously playing for the national team. Is the um, the highest honor that you could have as a football player? It, it doesn't get any higher than playing for your country. Right. Um, now, playing for your country also brings a lot of positives. Um, you get uh, more money, uh, maybe a bigger contract. Uh, more clubs in Europe are more likely to take you because you're in the national team of a particular country, right. um, and so. It, it has um, a lot of positives as well. Uh, so it, um, from my side, I think it, um, talking with the players, spending time with the players um, as a coach, as a manager, and genuinely having an interest in their well-being. Uh, obviously, you have a happy player who is uh, okay, he's going to play better. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I, I have a, an added interest, but I, I genuinely care about uh, my players and if I can help them I will um, and if that means that they're going to help me a little bit more on the pitch then that's fine I, I, I will take that Okay, makes sense and uh, you have managed uh, India in two stints uh, how are they both different? Wow <laughs> um, when I was um, writing down my answers that I sent right, right. Um, yeah, then. I, 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 I just couldn't look um, in 2000 and uh, two, I think, when I came to uh, India, 2002 to 2005. Right. Um, a lot of teams, a lot of interest, a lot of people playing football, but there wasn't much money. Right. Um, the club are paying their players much money. The, the, there was not a lot of TV money at the time. Um, and um, I, I think the interest was there, but not as widely publicized. So if I was to go fast forward to 2015, when I came uh, 10 years later, right. um, more money, um, the organization was better uh, okay. from teams, um, but you have the, um, there were more jokers. Okay. okay? Uh, we, we have uh, uh, a lot of people who have uh, almost, zero knowledge of football and they are making football decisions um, which is not good for football of course um, so it, it's good to see ex-players ex-Indian players starting to get more involved in the decision making and I'll give you a, a, a super example is Abhishek Yadav right. uh, who, who now has been really well with the AIFF we need more people like that in the game in India because they know football they understand football and when they make uh, um, football decisions, they're based on football as opposed to so many other people. And this is not only an Indian problem, it's all over the world. Where we have people who, um, they like the game, but they see the game as making money. Um, yeah. Therefore, their decisions are based on, well, how much money can I make from this particular situation? Right. Rather than, this is going to benefit the players, the coaches, and uh, these kind of things. So, um uh, I, I think that's the biggest difference. There's more money in the game. That means uh, it attracts the, the the sharks and the um, right. people. I, I, I'm not saying we don't need administration or, or we don't need uh, good business people in football, but we, we just need them to think, let's think about the benefit of football first and not how many people are going to be uh, uh, getting paid or right. that kind of thing. Right, right, right. and. Uh, uh... You know, you have coached the three best strikers in Indian football. I am Vijayan, mm. I think Bhutia and Sunil Chetri. Uh, they were so good and they scored the goals when you needed them the most. 
uh, do you think there's a striker to carry forward the legacy because chetri you know that he is coming at an age where he can't perform like he used to do before and uh, who do you think yeah, look uh, um I, I i think um we had uh, um quite quite a number of players um that i was working with and hope, hope hoping that they would uh, come up the problem the problem we have in india is that um especially now with the isl going to three foreigners and an asian right. you know 100% 100% that one of those three foreigners is going to be a striker uh, maybe 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 two of them uh, and, and so the problem there is is um if you're an indian uh, player 17 18 and you think yeah i'm quite fast i'm going to be a striker nah, no no if i say i'm a striker maybe i don't get a team right but No, it is not a place so i think um we really need to try and uh, continue to um produce the players i mean manveer singh uh, uh, for me ashik kurnian is a striker uh, he's playing left back for the national team right. he's a absolute beast. i mean I, i remember when we gave him his debut in the asian cup he absolutely terrified the uh, the thailand team they did they had no way to handle him uh, he needs to obviously work uh, um, but for me um, he would be a striker and there was a uh, um, you know it, it, there was a couple but i think um, this is down down to the clubs to produce these kind of players it's not up to the national team but right right, right. yeah I, we we had a couple in the um, in the olympic team so manveer was with us and um, ashik and uh, a couple of other players but yeah we need to to make sure that we don't um not have any indian strikers you right right uh, i understand your point because uh, in isl we see a lot of foreign uh, strikers dominating the game and if there are no indian yeah. players who are doing uh, so they can't just go into the national team and start performing over there right no no exactly um and i think uh, uh i don't know if we can put a limit um from the isl and say look you can only sign sign one foreign striker right uh, yeah i mean look but some teams play with only one striker so if you play with one striker then you know uh, we play with two so okay um, um if you play with two then one indian striker and one foreign striker and with 12 teams in the ISL maybe next year then you have uh, maybe 12 strikers or 10 strikers right um at the moment i don't know who they're going to play as a striker in in the games that they have uh, next month right 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 a very good example would be chetri who was playing for bengaluru fc as a striker full time and then he progressed on to playing in the indian team so i think that's the model we should be looking for right yeah uh, absolutely okay absolutely okay, okay. uh it's a it's a very it's a question that is uh, that could be very close to your heart you stepped down as the india coach in 2019 after the afc asian cup and uh, we saw the press conference you got pretty emotional and you just uh, joined hands and you left how what was the moment like and what does uh, india what place does india have in your heart well i think um i had um completed four years so seven years right uh india india gave me the opportunity um to um to be great okay india gave me this opportunity and um from the uh from all the staff um my secretary shanta gominath to uh, um gigi bai and all the others they were super for me in the four years um when you uh when you bond with people when you um uh suffer if that's the right word in all of the problems and issues that we had over the four years um and then uh you qualify for the, a major event a major footballing event right um it um it's tough i mean uh, i had told the players in the dressing room before that i was stepping down after the game against bahrain right and i had some players were crying right so it was uh it was really difficult and i and i thought to myself you know um 
how much people in India meant to me, um, how much uh, the staff meant to me. So it, it was uh, it was a tough emotional emotional moment, and I have uh, nothing but love for India, always will. So. Uh, any it was tough. Coming back, coach. Any plans of coming back? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, at the moment, I'm uh, I'm in Paphos, Paphos FC. Um, we are doing okay. Um, okay. Since we've uh, managed to um, uh, turn things around, uh, you know. Look, I will never say no to India. So um, um, you never know what's out there. Um, right. I, you know, if if you have uh, if you have an offer uh, from India, I mean, I I, I I don't know if I could say no. So right, it just depends. That's on. great. That's great news. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. No. Look. Um, as I said, India has been good for me. I I respect the people, the culture. Um, I have a lot of friends there, and right. um, always love India. So that. That will not change whether I, I'm, whether I never ever go back or what, that will never change. So. Right, right. That makes sense. Okay. So, so you're at Parfos right now. It's a very different experience from the ones you have had before in India and Rwanda and other African countries. How is, how is it different? It's very cut to cut. There are oh. Yeah. Well, okay. So um, do you know why um, whenever I went to a national team, I would insist for no salary to take the under-23 team. Right, um, I've, I've read that. Okay. Because I, I, I love working with players. So right. um, take that at no extra uh, um, right. uh, thing to federation because I want to work. So um, what I miss at club football is there every single day. Right. Uh, and I'm working every single day. Uh you know, and I love I, I love the day to day stuff. So, um, Paphos, we have uh, really really good facilities. Um, I have um, some Premier League players playing for me. Right. Um, two boys who are going to go to the Euros um, okay. uh, in about two weeks. I'm going to lose them in about two weeks. Right. Uh, and the uh, the the group of players that we have here are really. Um, Good, good boys. Um, they they work hard. Um, and have given me everything in in, in the last uh, three four months that I'm here. Um, um, it's it's different. It's di obviously we, we you know we have a game on uh, we have a game on Wednesday right. and then a Saturday and Wednesday and it's like uh, you, you don't have time to think exactly. of anything. Exactly. No, exactly. Um, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> Super. But no, no. Um, but it's it's cutthroat here, you know. It's uh, uh, it really uh, it's the sharp end. Um, the, the, you know, the league in Cyprus is one of, is the top fifteen league in in Europe. Right. Um, a small a small island, but the level here is quite good, and um, we have some quality players um, uh, both at Paphos and um, around the country. Right, right. So there is a game on Wednesday. Then there's a game on Saturday. How, how do you change your tactics? Because usually in a national team, it's more slowed down and you know when the fixtures are going through and you can prepare accordingly. But this is very back-to-back. -back. Say on Wednesday, somebody gets injured. You have to quickly switch that tactic and then according to Saturday, you have to change it and then... Well, you know, um, okay, so our, 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 next, our next game, so we play Wednesday and then right. we play next Wednesday and then Saturday. Right. Um, but you're right. Um, uh, this is this is why the GPS is so important. Right. Um, right. This is why you have these things because right. if uh, if um, Zhao, one of our players, um, he plays on Wednesday, uh, we get all the information the same time, so we know how Zhao's feeling, and right. that we have two uh, to get him ready for the game on on Wednesday. So it's right. all about. Um, looking after the players, managing the players in terms of what loads they can carry. Uh, that's why you need 25 players in a squad. I mean, uh, I think in Paphos, we will play a uh, total maybe 40 games. Right. Uh, in England, they play 50 games. Uh, you add the European in, and um, a good team in Europe is going to be playing between 65 and 70 games. Um, and that is a lot of football. 
so it's very important that you have backups. It's very important that you don't treat the backup like a backup. You treat him like he's going to play because he is going to play. And then when he does play, he needs to do the job. And if he does the job, then you leave him. And the, yeah. and the first team player then becomes the backup. Uh, and, and you create competition. And, um, you know, this is, uh, this is the nature of the beast. Uh, you need to compete every day, every single day in training. You need to compete. Um, because if you don't, somebody's going to take your place. And there's plenty of people to do. And this is also applicable to being a manager or a coach. True, true, true. Uh, I recently heard a Pep Guardiola interview in which he's saying there are so many games and I'm, I don't think we are taking care of our play players. He was talking about UEFA, how they're changing fixtures and adding more fixtures and things like that. Do you think it's very difficult uh, in a club level to manage player fitness? Uh, yes, I would say it's extremely difficult because um, when you're playing as many games as Manchester City are playing, um, but you know, this is the price of success. Uh, could, could 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 Manchester City not qualify and they would save themselves 10, 12 games? Right. They need to be there um, because they want to be there. They went to the final of the FA Cup. Um, they went to the final of the League Cup. <laughs> so um, how are UEFA going to change that? You are being successful and successful right. means games. Yeah, more games right. uh, and, and, and so... Can you complain if you've had uh, uh, 70 games, but you've gone to the finals of three, four um, tournaments? It, you know, um, this is why you are doing what you're doing. So, um, it, but it, it, he's right. It's very difficult. And I, I do think that um, UEFA could adjust the calendar. It's not going to change the games that you're going to play. True. Because if you're, in, uh, if you're in the Champions League and you're the Premier League, there's 48 games, uh, then you have a cup, two cups, um, and there's another 12 games. It's not going to change. And then you have players who go for international duty. Oh. So where I with Pep uh, in, in, that, in the last uh, international window, I don't think we needed to have the players play three games right. in 10 days. Right. Two games, which was why it was uh, done. Um, two games is enough. Um, and there's a bit of recovery in between, but three games and then go back to your club and then your club's playing three games a week. Uh, I agree. I agree there that, um, right. you know, that could have been looked at in, in a better way. I mean, we have to, at the end of the day, think about the benefit for the players. Right, right. Makes sense. Okay, Mr. Constantine, we have talked so much about your professional life. A personal question, you grew up as an Arsenal fan, right? You're a gunner. Absolutely. Right? So, uh, yeah. what, what do you yeah. think about uh, what do you think about the recent performances? Do you think Arteta is doing a good job? Well, I don't think um, they're, they're, they've been playing so well. They seem. Um, I, I watched them play yesterday against Newcastle, and right. Uh, uh, I, I, look, um, <laughs> I've had this discussion with a lot of people. Um, what would I do if you if I was in Arteta's shoes? Every Arsenal fan uh, would say the same thing. The thing is, we don't know. Why? Because we are not on the ground right. working with the players day to day. We are not in the heads of the players. We do not know their problems. We do not know their injuries. I do not know how much money he has to spend. Right. Um, I, I, I don't know. So I can think, well, if I was him... I would do this, this, and this. Would I play David Luiz, for example? Um, maybe yes, maybe no. But mm. if, that, if that's who I have, right. I don't like him. <laughs> I've got to, because I don't have anybody else. Right. So right. it's very right. difficult to um, uh, think what the manager should or shouldn't do. But it's very easy when you're on your couch. Right, true. And, uh, drink and some some nuts and <laughs> and you're thinking, oh well what's he doing um, this is this is the same um, you know for for all of the fans for all of the teams right. I'm sure sure there were people thinking see them what the hell are you doing why did you put this to play and I'm like no 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 he has to play because he does this for me this guy doesn't do that for me and um, you know uh, from the couch you are always correct. Right. Uh, and so that's 
I respect all the fans and their opinions because we are always right as a fan. Right. But yeah. un to the, until we get into the shoes of right. the guy that are uh, smashing, right. maybe think a little bit more. True, true. true. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, two more, uh, two more quick predictions. One is for the UEFA sure. Champions League, and one is for the Euros. Who do you think is going to win the Champions League first? PSG. PSG, and why? Look, I think uh, <laughs> when those two little boys they have are on fire, right. they beat anybody. Um, they just try and finish the game. I think Chelsea, Chelsea. Uh, defensively have become very, very difficult to beat. Um, right. But uh, I, I think I'm going to go with PSG. Okay. And uh, what about the Euros? What do you think? England. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it was either England or India, but India are not in the Euros. So, um, right. look, I, I, I think in the last, um, the last major, two, three major tournaments, England have started to um, uh, become dangerous. Right. Um, obviously, Spain are really good, and Portugal, and you can never uh, uh, discount Germany. And then you've got these other little countries, Croatia. Right. Uh, um, you know, but but I would like to think England um, are, are going to give it a good go. And I, I have to uh, stay with my heart and say, the three lions, baby. Okay. Um, Let's do this. <laughs> okay, Mr. Uh, President, okay. it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you so, so much. And best of luck with your uh, fixtures with Pafos. And we hope you win every game you play this season. And, Me uh, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stay safe, uh, Mr. Constantine, and take care of yourself. Thank you so much for the interview with you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.